Okay, folks, this is the Shea locomotive again. As you can see, it doesn't look like any ordinary locomotive. Hey, I'm just going to take pictures and shoot in the car. In Forks, it never stops raining. It just mists. Okay, there's the length of the locomotive. As you can see, there's no driving wheels. Hmm. No driving wheels. How can that be? Uh oh. No driving wheels. How can that be? I wish I had some kind of a thread. Okay. Let's start off the business end. The cylinders. They're not so vertical. It's like a car in. Crank rods that go down to a crankshaft. See the crankshaft? The crankshaft runs all the way back to the caboose and actually runs the caboose. It runs forward on the engine. Okay. Here's the trick. I don't know how this works, but somehow the crankshaft is. Uh, Either the universal joints, or maybe it has a worm gear right there. No, I see a pin. I see a gear there. I don't know. But easiest way is be, it'd be a worm gear and then a pinion gear to drive the the wheels and the axles. This is completely different than a regular locomotive. Regular locomotive, the uh, uh, the cylinders are up front. They're horizontal, they push the crank rod, which cranks the driving wheels of the engine. This is completely different. It's used for logging. And it was used for uh, logging. <laughs> Good traction. That was, the, that was the whole thing about this. Traction. Okay, I'm not going to linger on this. You guys can freeze frame it. It never stops raining in forks, so it seems. It just goes to a mist. Oops. Anyway. That's the scoop. But these parts right here are the business end. So this is what converts the drive shaft. Okay, the drive shaft is coming from the crankshaft where the pistons are. And the drive shaft, just like a car, except it doesn't turn a differential. It turns a universal gear at right end. It turns a, yeah, it's something like a car. Because it is, uh, the drive shaft is right angle to the wheel shaft, yeah? Same thing, almost. Okay. This was made in Lima, Ohio. We're in the same place where the 4449 was made. How about that? Okay. Oh, and this stopped. Gosh, I wish we could get a better view of that, but it's all fenced in. I just can't... I just can't seem to uh, grasp how... Oh. Alright, here we go. Here's a clue. See the bevel gear? It's, the bevel gear is the, the background object, that part right there, that's the bevel gear. And it looks like it's hooked directly to the crankshaft, or the dry, oh, wheel shaft. And somehow that bevel gear is, is geared to the, uh, the drive shaft. I'm loving this, folks. I've never seen a Shea in person. 
This is, this is a legendary locomotive. No questions about that. There's the cab. Let's see. There's a better shot of the front. I want to get this. You know, the rain did stop. For just an instant. Just a little bit. Um, I pretty much got all the details. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, but you can see that's the crank rod on the piston. And it goes down to the crankshaft. Those are the counterweights. Right on a car, crankshaft. These here, those are the air compressors. Like on any other speed locomotive. Okay, and of course that's the tank with the air pressure. Got in. Let me get a better shot. Here's that bevel gear again. There's a bevel gear on the axle. That's strange. Maybe that's how they did it. They had two bevel gears at right angles to one another. I'll bet you. You think? What do you think? I don't know. Okay. 